just what the council itself was like. So I went along as an observer rather than a reporter. Uh, so I wanted to make that sort of clear before we go any further. Uh, so I was I was looking at uh, various uh, behaviours, and uh, certainly the unfortunate thing is that there is very little examination of the executive at all. In fact, most most of the established uh, uh, people, the members of the the main party, the main group, and I think that local politics should. Perhaps you've noticed that I, I've been not mentioning the, uh, the the names of the parties, and that's because I think that uh, local governments or governance uh, shouldn't be uh, um, party political. It should be for people who really desperately want to see our community flourish and who are prepared to uh, do work hard to make sure it's that and not go along in party lines and if you wanted to see anything at all in the party the leading group is every time there's a vote is somebody pulled a string and they all leapt to the feet together talking about a three line with absolutely no dissension whatsoever none <laughs> and from time to time they kept slipping in what how wonderful the, the officers were well you know my, my, my friend whom I'd met earlier in the day and he said that uh, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, that councillors now felt they had to be chummy with 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 the officers, uh, chummy with the executive. He was absolutely right. There, is, there is no nobody's really that interested in, in looking at, uh, at whether we've got a good council or a bad council. And when I say that, I'm talking about the executive level. They're, they're much more interested in their their, their politics and. Uh, and, and making sure that they stay politically correct. Let's have a bit of political incorrectness, for God's sake. Let's bring back, let's bring back good debate, good honest debate. Let's see them shouting at one another. And if you insult one another once in a while, so be it. The great thing about debating, as we understand it in the debating societies and the debating clubs and the debates that go on in various organizations around the country, is that you debate and you actually call a spade a shovel. And then you go and have a pint together afterwards because you have fully understood that it is debate to win the point. It is a debate to make sure that your point of view gets a hearing. That, that wasn't evident at all in the council last night. Not at all. Apart from Stephen Caitlin and, in her waspish way, Ruth O'Keefe, uh, there was none. One gentleman very softly asked a question about the phones <laughs> he was put down. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the, phones, the phones will be fixed. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> well, let's let's break out a bottle of champagne the day that they are. <laughs> because it, they're not working at the moment. <laughs> and the same frustration for everybody is trying to get through. And in fact, I think he said that he was trying to get through on behalf of a constituent. <laughs> and he couldn't. <laughs> I mean, the reason I'm laughing is that, that you know, there's this s sense of unreality that everything is okay, chaps. You know, we we can meet and we can, we can have a nice jolly little uh, piece of fun. And the, the leader of the council got up and, and s sort of made the point that he was so pleased that, that the, the council was now civilised and, and uh, that uh, uh, some of the uh, perhaps name-calling, who's, who's going to say, would be actually... Uh, it, it, to to uh, uh, be nice and polite to each other while they were, they were debating. Debate isn't like that. And that's not what we expect from our politicians. We expect them to hold the executive to account. We want an efficient council. And we did. Under the old system, we had an efficient council. We had a brilliant council in Lewis. And I'm afraid that it's just not anymore. And now I'm beginning to understand why. is because, you know, it, it it's, comes from the top. The culture of an organisation comes from the top, and the top's culture is laissez-faire. Let, let's sort of wander through, and we'll make one or two big decisions, and then and we'll wander off. It's, it's everyday stuff that we want looking after. It's, we want to be able to, to call the council and complain. We want to get our mail on time. We want to get our payments, if they're being payment, uh, on, on due date. No, what, what it is at the moment is just a, a complete utter mess, and, and how sad, how sad, because 
we know what we have. Those of us are old enough anyway. And I've been around Lewis long enough. I've been around 27 years. 28 coming out this year, I guess. And, uh, you know, it, it is, it is uh, not at all what it was. And I begin to understand why. And there's an election coming up. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not party politics. I don't care who's in there. What I, I'm a meritocrat, actually. What I want is the very best people for the job. Will, will we get the very best people for the job? No, we won't. Because I'm as bad as anybody else. We're all lemmings, aren't we? We all go and vote for the There it is. We, we've got the right to vote. But do we do it thoughtfully? No, we do not. <laughs> we, 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 we just, you know, I, I recognise that name or I'm going to vote for that party. I think that party politics has, should disappear from local government. I was privileged in uh, when I, I was quite young, so I was quite impressionable and I could understand. And then I became a journalist and, and was covering Vancouver City Council for a number of years and their Parks Board, which was an independent uh, elected body. And they, the, the one impressive thing was that there was no party politics at all. In fact, on the City Council, there was a chap called Harry Rankin. I'll remember him to my dying day. Great character. He was a communist. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that he couldn't do was if the council <laughs> had to go down for any business in the United States, they wouldn't let him across the border <laughs> because they didn't let communists into the United States. But Harry was, was a great character, and he worked tirelessly, tirelessly for uh, the, the, the city. And uh, I really think that that sort of system worked terrifically well, and I can't understand why it can't work here as well. Let's get people in who who are going to do the job for us and are going to make sure that the people they hire... Well, last night, you know, it's, it's funny, isn't it, how... how I, I think it was Plato that said, um, if a man becomes good at one thing, he immediately thinks that he's very good at everything else. And, and the, the way that they banded around sort of publicity, and uh, there wasn't a great deal of talk about it, but it was obvious that they had a clue what PR was about. Not a clue to them, it's just the odd press release. And, and I don't think they, they, they've, they've even got anybody who looks after the press. No, in fact, I know they haven't because I've asked. And, and I know several other people that have asked. <laughs> and there's, there's nobody dedicated. They don't have any sort of PR at all. But, you know, big corporations pay huge amounts to have really good PR. And... and uh, um, we, we're not, we don't even recognise what it is, uh, then we're in trouble. We really are. And for politicians, I'm absolutely amazed that they take that attitude. But then, this is Keith, you see. I mean, uh, what I am is I'm a curmudgeon. I'm the, the conscience, if you like, of, the, of the, the council. They wouldn't see it that way. They, they, I'm just an irritant. In fact, they're having a real go at me one way or another under the table. And, and, <laughs> and I don't blame them if they can get rid of me one way or another. Why? I don't think they're even really quite aware of, uh, of, of how many people listen. Uh, it, it, you know, if you want to look at the stats... It just doesn't seem as if too many people are listening to us. But, you know, those shares, those shares, uh, they, they, they take these programs all over the place. And I get tremendous feedback from all sorts of people on all sorts of things. And uh, I think that uh, uh, not least of which is some of the writing that I do in, uh, in Town and County magazine. Uh, and uh, that uh, really has hit the streets running, as, as it were. And it does, uh, uh, it reflects quite well what's happening in the, in the town. And it also is, uh, uh, it, it can be critical of, of, of the, the council. I mean, there, there are a couple of articles in it uh, last time who uh, were, they, they had a, a real go, and, and so they should. And that shows balance. Now, no balance on this program. I just have a go at the council, <laughs> but actually, that's not true. Uh, I, I have asked now on four separate occasions, a writing to the council for information. Not one reply. All they do is they send me a council tax bill. Not one reply, and I had some pretty serious issues to, to discuss with them. But one of them was, uh, who, who on earth do, do I, as a journalist, talk to? Who, who is who's your man in charge? Not a dicky bird. My guess is there ain't anybody. They haven't got anybody. They've not thought about it. Well, 
it's about time that we got some thinking people on that council. And if it's not these... And with, and, and with fairness, in absolute fairness, this is the first time I've watched them in action. But it was far from impressive. Far from impressive. Not what I expected from the council of what rightly is considered to be a jewel in the British countryside, a small town, a small town in its Sussex, whose boss is Prince Harry, and who really should be carrying the torch for the entire country. Is it? Not in my opinion, it's not. Don't think I've got have I got time yet? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you. Let's, let's, let's just. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I love this one. Church, because it doesn't sound a bit like church. Believe it or not, that uh, that church is by a gentleman called Benjamin Banger. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you absolutely know it? All right, uh, two points I would make is, first of all, uh, what did they talk about last night? Well, it was dog poo. Most of the evening was taken up with dog poo and, uh, and how they should control it and so on and so forth. So something important was talked about. And I, I don't say that lightly. I do understand that it, it, it's a real health hazard nowadays and that uh, there are still a number of people that, that, that don't recognise uh, uh, they also talked about um, uh, needles and uh, uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the drug issue in Lewis is becoming a bit of a, a, a problem particularly if you've got kids running into the woods uh, the uh, uh, land around the railway station and so on and so forth, the woods there and finding needles yeah, that that was that is important, but but dog poo for most of the evening. Okay, that's it uh, for this morning. Keith Hayes out of Lewis, having had a scintillating evening at Lewis District Council. Um, all I would say is, uh, let us understand that there is an election in May, and thank God there is. But I wonder if we'll see change. I doubt it. But a few of us will keep the pressure on until they get us. <laughs> I can't wait to see the reaction to these these programs. Till then, until tomorrow, Keith Hayes with Rouser Radio out of Lewis, East Sussex, broadcasting to the world, but with particular concern for those from Battle to Brighton. Toodle pip. He said, Toodle Pip. Yeah, here we go. Toodle Pip it is. <laughs>